Right, now it is just four days since Prince Harry attended his father's coronation at Westminster Abbey all by himself. Today, though, his attention moves to the courtroom as the first of his multiple legal claims against the tabloid press reaches trial. Well, Harry's amongst a group of claimants, including Michael Lavelle and Nikki Sanderson. They're accusing the Mirror Group newspapers of historical phone hacking. Well, join me now to discuss the significance of this case is media lawyer Antonia Foster, a partner at Carter Ruck, alongside royal commentator Jenny Bond. Um, Antonia, thank you. I, I, if you could put this in context, because this is really unusual, isn't it? A member of the royal family who will probably, we may well see in, in court. Yes, uh, that's the expectation. Uh, he won't be in court today. Um, there'll probably be opening arguments today from, from both sides, barristers. Um, but he is expected to come and be cross-examined in, in June, early June, mid-June. Gosh, so this is the first of many, isn't it? You know, that this case is different to the other ones that are probably coming up round the horizon. It, it's the first one that's reached trial. Right. We don't yet know. He's got three other uh, legal cases going on, two phone hacking and one defamation case. Uh, we don't yet know if they will reach this trial and final stage, but right. uh, we'll wait and see. How difficult is it to, to win these kind of cases, you know, to take them on in the first place? Because we know that a lot of this was settled out of court. Um, according to Harry, we know that other members of the royal family have settled out of court. How hard is it? You know, that's a, that's a, mm. it's, it's quite a, it's a brave thing for him to do. It, it is a brave thing to do. It's an uncertain thing to do. Um, litigation is never certain, however good or bad you think your case is. Uh, so he is, it, it is a bit of a lottery in some respects, uh, and it is potentially very expensive um, should he lose, both reputationally and, and financially. So what does he... What does he have to prove then, in a sense? He is trying to prove that uh, Mirror Group uh, newspapers knew that their journalists were unlawfully uh, obtaining information, including by phone hacking, um, about private matters uh, that, that you know, he wished to remain private. Um, it's going to be quite hard, I think, uh, after all this time, because these are very uh, long ago historic allegations. Mm. Uh, but there is some evidence from former journalists that uh, th this was going on at, at Mirror Group at the time. What Mirror Group say, of course, is that they, they never authorised it. And if it were a few rogue journalists, that's awful. But it wasn't an institutional, um, right. uh, you know, directed event. These cases don't come cheap, do they? I mean, this is going to cost uh, Prince Harry an awful lot of money to take the case, you know, to take it to court in the first place. Yes, and that may be one of the reasons why it's come as far as it has, because he, unlike many, many claimants, doesn't have the, the financial imperative as far as we understand mm. it. Um, you know, he presumably can afford to do this and perhaps, more importantly, um, afford to lose, because should he lose, he'll have to pay uh, a proportionate least of, of Mirror Group's costs. Gosh, and that can run into millions, couldn't it? It, it? Could, do. it could run it into could millions. Um, stay with us, because we've got, we've got Jenny Bond as well. And Jenny, we heard from Prince Harry, he says this is kind of his mission almost. You know, he is a man with a mission. Oh, he is, absolutely. He said um, in one of his interviews about his book, he said it was his life's work to reform journalism as a profession. I've been reminding myself, actually, of what he wrote in that book about journalists. And he says uh, the Fleet Street journalists are a mob of dweebs, crones, cut-rate criminals and diagnosable sadists. So that's his view of journalists. Um, and he's going to be arguing in court that uh, these stories, whether they were attained illegally or not, made him feel violated, paranoid, made him question his relationships uh, with his family and with his friends. And uh, it seems to me that either way, damage is going to be inflicted um, on the media and on the palace, because one way or another, we're going to either establish that these stories were attained illegally, or where did the mirror get them? And Harry's view would be that they came from the palace, from the briefings he spoke again and again in the book. He believes that the palace leaked stories to the press. But in this instance, um, he's, he's going against uh, the mirror. Maybe he'll go against the palace next, who knows? Gosh, th I mean, this could be hugely damaging, couldn't it? I mean, it, you know, you can't imagine any more damage being inflicted upon uh, the royals generally, but this could, this could be really bad for all concerned. Well, it couldn't. It's so complicated because, for example, he is bound to come up against or talk about Piers Morgan, who was the editor of The Mirror for part of the time. 
Um, and yet Princess Eugenie and Beatrice appear to be friends with Piers Morgan. They were pictured only a couple of weeks ago, hugging him outside a pub. Some do they were at, and Piers was there was his wife. Um, and yet Harry, we know, is, is close to Eugenie. We saw, saw him sitting next to her um, just at the coronation. Um, so it's very complicated, very messy, but he is, as you say, a man on an absolute mission here. It's interesting, though, because, you know, to see somebody from the royal family in a, in a courtroom, it's not happened for hundreds of years. You know, it, it just, you're a senior member of the royal family, certainly. Well, I think the last time, was, the last time I think, was uh, Princess Royal, Princess Anne, when uh, she had to go to court, obviously not Crown Court, yeah. uh, about her dog, which had uh, oh, behaved very badly. Yes, 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 I remember that. So, uh, but I th otherwise, we have to go back to the 19th century, I think. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. extremely rare. And it is brave of Harry. Um, he, he, he's as good as his word. He said he was going to take the press to task, and he's going to do that. It's going to be absolutely explosive seeing him uh, in June in the court if he does take the stand, which he fully intends to. He does, Jenny, thank you. And, and Antonia, as we said, this is the first, the first sort of, if you like, for him, the first hurdle. We don't know what's round the corner. There are other cases as well. That's right. So yeah. this is his first experience of a full trial and, and for all of us to watch it at home. <laughs> it's extraordinary. We contacted the Middle Group newspapers. This is what they had to say. We will vigorously defend, they say, against allegations of wrongdoing where our journalists acted lawfully. We are committed to acting with integrity. Our objective in this trial is to allow both the business and our journalists to move forward from events that took place many years ago. Um, and business as usual for the royals yesterday, of course. Um, they were all out and about doing what they do. There they are, looking, Kate, as always, flawless, absolutely beautiful. Um, also, though, now this is a bit weird, there's a look at how, well, the celebrations may have been. You know, we've been talking about um, artificial intelligence well, there was a photographer in Australia and he's kind of mocked up these photographs. There's Charles. Oh, geez, there's Camilla. That's a bit disturbing, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, there's Prince William. Actually, that looks pretty cool, I think. That's not too bad. Um, Kate on the decks. She may well do that. And there's George. Uh, yeah, very strange. It just shows you what you can do these days. It's uh, quite remarkable. Thank you very much indeed.